of depleted uranium shell does when it hits, it creates the heat and then it makes millions of tiny bits of metal fly through there and that's what kills everybody. I went for my 18 week checkup and they told me that uh, my second twin baby was grossly deformed. Nach dem Golfkrieg, Ende 1991, konnte ich im Irak dann Krankheitsbilder feststellen, die mich sehr nachdenklich gemacht haben. My fellow Americans, major combat operations in Iraq have ended in the Battle of Iraq. The United States and our allies have prevailed. The war is officially over, but fighting continues and the silent tide of death keeps rising. This is the mother and child hospital in Basra. <laughs> Anna Doktor Almani. Anna Schufada. What is the age? It's four years old. One year old. One year old. Yes. Prognosis? The prognosis is very bad. 80%, mortality 80%. As we know, the DU may be transmitted by the wind and uh, involve uh, the everything is contaminated now. The air, the soil, the food is contaminated by this material. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. <laughs> this skin disease is fish-like mouth and eyes. They will die. Sind alles schlechte Prognosen hier. Die Kinder leben alle nicht mehr lange. Und furchtbare Situation. Das bedrückt mich alles so, wenn ich das sehe. Furchtbar, furchtbar, furchtbar. Professor Zygvat Horst Günther is on his way to Iraq. The 79-year-old is escorted by Ted Wayman, Deputy Director of the Uranium Medical Research Center in Toronto, Canada. Two men looking for evidence that depleted uranium, DU ammunition, was used by the ton in the recent Iraq war. They're convinced it's responsible for Gulf War Syndrome, which has now undermined the health of hundreds of thousands of soldiers and civilians. Each man has his own reasons for making this trip. Erstens mal bin ich Arzt, zweitens war ich über 40 Jahre in diesen Regionen tätig und drittens habe ich hier Geschosse gefunden, die uranhaltig sind und habe hier schwere Krankheitsbilder gefunden. Und jetzt fahre ich hin, um zu sehen, ob sich diese Krankheitsbilder nach dem neuen Golfkrieg erneuert haben. I've come uh, to collect urine specimens from people who are exposed to the bombing, also to take soil samples, water samples, perhaps uh, lung, by, lung samples uh, to look for potential uh, contamination as a result of exposure to uranium used in uh, coalition weapons. On the road from Basra to Kuwait, the battlefields of both Gulf Wars. Professor Günther is looking for tanks destroyed by American and British DU shells. He uses a Geiger counter to check the level of radioactivity. Here we have now a Panzer found that was depleted uranium munition. And it's one here. Am Turm und hier an der Seite. Und wenn wir das messen, dann liegt die Radioaktivität bei diesem Gerät weit im roten Bereich. Bei diesem Einschuss wird im Innern des Panzers eine Temperatur von 1000 Grad Celsius freigesetzt. Die Soldaten verglühen. 
Es wird Uranoxid freigesetzt und die Umwelt dadurch verseucht. In Oweri, a suburb of Baghdad, Ted Wayman and Iraqi physician Dr. Ikrim Shakli visit a 10-hectare site used by the Americans as a dump for captured and crippled military hardware. The purpose of the visit, to get sand and soil samples. We need about uh, half a gram of dust to, for the lab to get a, a, an adequate reading. When we were here two days ago, the children were scavenging and salvaging the, um, the metal to sell to the scrapyards. The dust was three, four, five inches thick. And wherever the trucks were moving, it would go up in large, like puffs, up into the air. And my counts have uh, doubled, tripled since we walked in this direction. Into this dust, my Geiger counter has gone up now to uh, f four times what it was when we arrived. Uranium munitions were used for the first time by U.S. and British Allied forces in the 1991 Gulf War. Servicemen who saw them in action were very impressed. <laughs> We saw them exploding. It's quite surreal. It's like slow motion. You know, you can sort of, you know it's hit, and then there's like a two or three second delay, and that's obviously when it's penetrating the armour, and then the whole thing just evaporates, basically. It was like putting a knife through butter, really. Uranium shells contain depleted uranium, a byproduct of nuclear power production. Nuclear waste is radioactive. It has to be stored in special containers and it needs to be guarded. And that costs money. A great deal of money when there's hundreds of thousands of tons to dispose of. So the nuclear industry was delighted when the military showed interest in its cheap uranium byproduct. The reason for that interest, uranium is one of the heaviest metals known to man. Twice as heavy as lead. When a uranium shell hits a tank, it penetrates the steel armor as if it was made of paper. At the same time, part of the uranium round vaporizes and ignites inside the tank, causing the ammunition present to explode and kill the crew. This double action is what makes the weapon so appealing to military strategists. Arms up. Jenny Moore is a DU victim, and this is where her troubles began. During the 1991 Gulf War, she was detailed to load British tanks with uranium shells. Her eldest daughter, Rebecca, also paid a price. I went for my 18-week checkup, and they told me that uh, my second twin baby was grossly deformed. A professor in London actually said to me, do you want to tell me now what drugs have you been taking? so we can work out how you've poisoned this baby. When you're sat there... <laughs> do you know, it, it doesn't... You can't even begin to tell you what it feels like to be told that you, you've poisoned this baby. And that you want to be lucky that one survived. And it was only for the sake that they were in separate um, sacks that one survives. Um, come the 24th week, Emily died and I had to carry on being pregnant with her because obviously I was carrying Rebecca at that time. After the 1991 Gulf War, the dangers of depleted uranium were still unknown, even in Iraq. The Allies had fired off some 300 tons of DU ammunition, much of it in the fierce tank battles south of Basra. When Professor Günther received a call to Basra after the war, he knew nothing about DU munitions either. Ich wurde im Oktober 1991 eingeladen, mir das Gesundheits 